There is a belief that enough martial arts training will make us invincible. This is what they'd expect. Jeff Thompson knows better. In reality, if you've got three people facing you, you're looking at death. If I allow anyone to come near me, as soon as he attacks, they would all attack. Jeff is a former nightclub bouncer and now one of the world's leading experts on street fighting. And that's, that's, where real, that's where it would happen with most people. Because they're waiting to be attacked, they'd be overwhelmed. So if I was facing more than one and I couldn't run away, I would position myself so these are offside me as I'm talking. And I'd... Tia! Tia! My specialism is realism, how it's going to be outside the chip shop, <clears throat> not how it's going to be in the dojo, not how it's going to be on the contest arena, how it's going to be where there's no whistles, no bells, no referees, how it's going to be when you're outside the chip shop with your girlfriend or with your kids and it kicks off when it's in your face, the ugliness of the martial arts that people don't really want to talk about. In a real situation, quite often the first thing you see, first thing you get, is when someone comes up to you and it says, you fucking got a problem with me. You're looking at me. You fucking keep out of it. You fucking keep out of it. Have you got a problem with me? Is this about fucking me and you? Before you can do anything else, you've got to get beyond that. And that's where most people fall apart. Because as soon as somebody becomes aggressive, they make themselves large. Everything becomes big. When a situation starts in the street, it normally starts with some kind of introductory dialogue. And then a situation just explodes. I call it the Jerry Springer syndrome. If you watch the Jerry Springer show, every time it kicks off, they like that argue and then bang, it just explodes. And it's just, like I said, it's earrings and hair. And it takes, it takes like 15, 16 stone security men to separate two women. But it's because it's so ferocious. That's what reality is. It's ugly and it's in your face and it's, it's so immediate. Um, and in the dojo, it's very controlled and, uh, and it's very aesthetic and it's in the nice lines and it looks good and, and don't swear whatever you do, never, don't swear because if you swear in the dojo that's terrible etiquette. So I do videos and I swear and people write to me and say, you said the F word, but that's what you're going to get outside the chip shop. The F word and the C word and the B word is a part of contemporary combat. People don't come up to you and say, you blighter, you bloody did this and don't you bloody look at me because it wouldn't have no effect. But if someone comes up to you and says, don't you fucking well look at me, it totally changes the situation. And although it's ugly, and I appreciate that it's ugly, it is a part of combat. And to be honest with you, I think all of it's ugly. I think the whole gamut is ugly. When it becomes physical, it's horrible. It's easy for you to say, like, I'm doing all this, but it doesn't stop people coming in and hoofing your head off. Two of my friends have been stabbed in this position. So Jeff has translated his years of experience on the door into a system he calls the three-second fight. So we'll come to here, this way. It is a technique for first trying to resolve disputes without violence. If that fails, Jeff encourages his students to act quickly and decisively. The front, the knee, snatch. All I'm going to do from here is control this space. If he moves forward, I'll control with my lead hand. Um, if I can't use verbal dissuasion, then I'll probably myself, I'll posture. And what I'll do when I posture is I'll strike him and push him away. So I'll just come from here, I'll just go, just stay where you are, stay there. And I would back it up with a verbal fence. What I do when I strike is I trigger adrenaline. So he gets a drop of adrenaline, he's got a space, that triggers the flight response. Okay, if I come in closer to him, I pull him into the fight response. He's cornered, he's a cornered animal. The Neanderthalic part of him is going to want to fight. If I create a gap, then that, that kind of mammalian part of him is going to want to run away. The main thing I teach, which is where most of the controversy comes from, is the preemptive attack. I teach people if they can't avoid a physical conflict to hit first. And I teach that because I know and I've learned that it's the only thing that works. As I'm talking to him, if I can't get away and I'm sure that an attack is imminent, I'm 100% sure, then I'll attack first. And from this point, that's the only thing that work. The blocking and countering will not work. It's about as useful as a paper condom. It won't, go, it won't happen. The grabbing and letting him throw me isn't going to work either, because although I can throw him or he, you know, we could go to grappling, it doesn't stop his mate suddenly materialising from all over the place and kicking my head in. Even strangers walking past will kick your head in, because that's the nature of society. So 
all I'm going to do from here, if I can't, is I'm going to ask him a question, and then, pow, pow, and then I'll just go in with either a punch or a headbutt or whatever's open to me, and I'll finish it within the first couple of seconds. That's it. Matty, he'd be shouting. Yeah, what are you fucking saying? Do you want to fucking go? Yeah? Miss. Okay. Have a get I'll just switch on, make it aggressive. Just switch on. Yeah, what are you saying then? What the fuck? Our natural instinct is to run away. It's the strongest instinct we've got. Now, for you to be able to override that, your willpower has got to be very powerful. Not only that, you've also got to get rid of all this nonsense about waiting to be attacked and wait and trying to block and counter. It won't work. So it's going to be physical. You know, control the pre-fight. If you can, avoid it and escape. And if you can't, uh, be the hammer or the anvil. You either hit first or you get hit yourself. And like I said, most situations these days do not end after the first blow. The fight starts when you hit the floor and then someone does a 56 move catter on your head. And when they finish, your mum won't recognise you. You just come out with the toe tag and the nice inscription on the marble. And it's not what you want. <laughs>